Um, you can see, of course, the spherical hemisphere is sitting on top, the center valve sitting in the back, and then the brain standing up up to the middle. So we'll look at all different structures and figure out whatever we have. Okay, so the big two cerebral hemispheres, or the cerebrum, makes up the majority of the um, volume of the brain. So this huge folded structure sitting on top, um, the cerebral and the cerebral hemisphere. Um, this sort of power structure sitting on top of the brain, this is what separates us from lower mammals. As we move down from the different levels of mammals, um, the cerebral sections get smaller and smaller, fewer and fewer folds. Um, we start going down to the lizards, birds, and amphibians. We start to lose the cerebral altogether. As we move back to the other two main sections of the brain, as we look at the um, caudal side, we see the cerebellum. Um, we'll talk quite a bit about the cerebellum. It's a crazy structure, um, super important structure. The cerebellum is not that big, but it's incredibly densely packed. The cerebellum has about 50% of the neurons in your brain. Um, the huge number of neurons, that means a huge, a huge amount of neurons in the same thing processing power. Um, more powerful microprocessing part of the brain. Um, we can talk about the neurons in the cerebellum, which are the kidney cells, and of course exactly what they're doing in the cerebellum. The brain stem that is the yellow part running up. Um, the brain stem is going to control all the um, ancient functions of your body. Uh, regulating your blood pressure, regulating your breathing, uh, regulating your body temperature, you know, all the autonomic things once we're in the background. Um, cerebral is used for movement, and cerebral hemisphere is used for your okay. Any questions so far? Okay, so now we have a slightly different view of the cerebral hemisphere. I'm going to talk about some other anatomical landmarks. I'm going to take an anterior viewpoint now looking down at the um, top surface of the brain. Immediately, what you notice is the cerebral hemispheres are separated into a left and a right hemisphere. Okay, if your brain is split by the middle, it's the left and the right side. Um, that split down the middle is the longitudinal fissure. But you can see, of course, if you're inside the brain, you can get from the left to the right side. They're definitely connected um, by the unfocused core. But when you look at the cerebral hemisphere, it's a picture down the center on the longitudinal picture. Then we look at the surface of the cerebral hemisphere, immediately what you notice is it's not a smooth surface, it's thrown into folds and ridges. Okay? The folds are called the gyri, that means the peaks of the hills, the valleys between them, the grooves, are the soul houses. Okay, the peaks of the valleys, peaks of the valleys, the peaks of the dry ride, the valleys of the soul houses. Now, as soon as you see a structure that's thrown in the peaks and valleys, dry ride, soul high, what do you mean it's increased by having the dry ride and soul high? <laughs> the surface area. So, right away, it's a good indication there, because there's anatomical specialization, there must be a good reason. Right form and function go together. So we see the surface area being increased. The reason is the surface area is the cortex of the cerebral um, um, hemisphere. This is where you find all the cell bodies. It's just a few millimeters thick. It's the gray part of the brain. It's just this thin coating on the very surface. The greater the number of cells you have, the greater the cell body you have, the smarter you're going to be. Okay, it's all about the numbers of neurons. The more neurons you have, the greater the processing power. Okay, so the brain has these dry around the sulci to vastly increase the surface area. By increasing the surface area, you can have more cells. More cells means smaller. There's only one other place to find cell bodies in the brain. You find the cell bodies of the neurons of the cortex, which is the outer sort of thin gray layer, and you also find them very deep inside the cerebral hemispheres, and in other cells as well as the trees, in what are called nuclei. When we talk about this terminology a bit right when we start the nervous system, we say in the peripheral nervous system, you have ganglia and nerves. And the way you find the cell bodies, nerves in the myelinated tract neurons. Sorry, it's bad terminology. Myelinated bundles of neurons. Um, in the central nervous system, the exact same thing would be nuclei and tracts. 
So deep down inside the brain.